Hey guys and welcome to episode 102 of the Let's Play and today hopefully my voice should be a tiny bit better at least hopefully I can uh, get through this recording without coughing or having to um, slowly kill myself so that should be absolutely amazing in any case um, the most important thing that is going to be done in this episode is making this windmill and <laughs> this, is, this is going to be the biggest deja vu ever since I built that bridge but the biggest credits go out to Pieces of Prestige, who just so happened to actually make this windmill, uh, which was actually the funniest thing since um, I was planning to have that Dutch bridge and had no set to do it with, and I was just kind of thinking about that, kind of just crying about that and stuff, and Pieces of Prestige was like, yo, I'll make a Dutch bridge, no problem. And then that happened, and then sh just very shortly after that, I needed a Dutch windmill, and what do you know, Pieces of Prestige made a Dutch windmill. Um, so, I don't know if it's up for download yet, I don't think so, it just kind of gave it to me, there are still some issues with the set, but if it does get released, I'll put it in the description, it's a really good windmill set, um, at least for the Dutch windmill, because that's the biggest problem that I faced with this entire windmill, there is already Station Gym's windmill set, which is also a really good set, I've just always had really big problems with that set, trying to get a sort of Dutch look to the windmills, and it's really hard to get that with it. It's a very much more international sort of windmill set. It is very versatile, but doesn't get the exact look that the Dutch windmills have. And I normally would have probably been okay with any sort of thing. But as I've mentioned in the last episode, this windmill is the weenie of the Dutch area. So it has to be really, really, um, well, pretty much 100% like the Dutch windmills that you see over here in Holland. And another very important thing is the fact that, you know, the windmills are very much one of the, well, pretty much the only thing that people really know when it comes to architecture in Holland, other than, of course, Amsterdam in general, but the windmills are really the most unique sort of architecture thing that people come to the Netherlands for, so I really wanted to get that in a certain way that you only kind of have them in the Netherlands, and <clears throat> basically that's kind of where a piece of prestige set came to be and why it was such an enormous help to kind of have that and the rest of this is just kind of going to be spent trying to add some stuff around the windmill and actually make that look good i actually faced a couple of problems with the waterfront area over there as you can see there are currently some flowers but one of the biggest problems over there was that um you know obviously the in-game Terraforming doesn't allow any curves, which is already quite a bummer. It's really hard to even make any sort of curved terraforming place that also has vertical sides. And I had to get some custom scenery in for that, but trying to get that transition between the real terraforming in-game and the fake custom scenery sort of cheated grass that you can see the flowers being placed on was actually really hard. And actually faced many problems with trying to get that transition right and that's how I actually came to kind of just randomly have this idea that I would actually add the little part that would go into the windmill which is very confusing by the way um and basically windmills I'm, I'm not gonna give a big history lesson right history lesson with silver at the inning I should have a jingle for that this is not the first time this has happened um but basically what the shit ton of windmills in the Netherlands are supposed to do is they pump the water out because the Netherlands is, well at least most parts of Holland are located below sea level and if you don't pump out the water it's gonna turn into a sea anyway regardless of how good you defend it because rain and stuff and it just likes to collect at the lowest place um, so you need to pump out all that water and that's what the windmills used to be used for many of them still are but they're like now there are motorized things that do it way better uh, but yeah, you need something in the windmills that can suck up the water from whatever canal it's next to. And I just actually accidentally just had that idea because I had that really big problem with the transition going from the in-game terraforming to the fake terraforming of like the water side over there. And wanted to cover that up with something. The initial idea was to have some rock work, but after looking at some pictures of real life windmills, I did realize, oh, I forgot something, these things pump water and you have some sort of connection to the body of water that they're next to and that connection is right over here and um, in the end it doesn't just look very, it doesn't just look really good, I kind of like the way that this is starting to shape up over here but it also really helps to get rid of that annoying transition and just get a nice little waterfront area there without having to worry about any terraforming glitches. 
Um, so that was, that's why that was really awesome and almost just the perfect thing right there for me to have. And the other thing that I wanted to get in this mill, and this was a tiny bit of, I suppose, artistic freedom that I decided to just take there. Um, <laughs> since most windmills are just built on their own, they really only have the stack of the building itself. They don't really come out of any sort of other facade or building. Um, but I wanted to get something over here, it's just a very simple thing. I wasn't really completely content with not just the, the shape, but especially also the size of the door that it came with. It was exceptionally small since um, you have to realize this, win this windmill is quite downscaled. In real life the mills are much larger, but if I wanted to make it like it is in real life, the mill would just completely dwarf the rest of the area. Um, but because of that reason the door was also really small and I did want to kind of make up for that so the solution over here is to add a tiny bit of a small building next to it which would mean that there would be no door that would not be unrealistic when you compare it in proportion to the size of the windmill itself um but i get like an actual door that's actually large enough for peeps to possibly enter if you could do like some stuff inside the windmill and get a nice little building next to the windmill that also sort of covers a bit of what was very empty over there. There was a lot of path work going on and this also kind of bridges the gap from the windmill to the playground area. Um, so that's why that kind of happened over there. The only reason why I'm using wooden walls over there, the wooden walls that I've used before, is because I couldn't really find anything else. But surprisingly that green wood actually went exactly like really well with the green wood that piece of prestige had on his windmill so in the end i think everything just worked and at this point i actually got told to add some swans in the water and i couldn't find the swans like uh, blackout said that they were possibly in lg's harbor set which i couldn't find them in but lg's harbor set did have some pretty cool boats so um the scavenging for boats had continued at that point i'm still looking for some really good boats i don't think there are any really dutch looking boats out there but just to kind of get that feeling of the canal going, um, especially Amsterdam, which is absolutely riddled with boats in the canals, along with bicycles. Most of, most of the things in the canals are bicycles, but there's also many boats. Uh, I wanted to get quite some boats in there as well. And since I, office, I obviously can't get the really Dutch boats, any sort of boats that I find I figure is going to do. Um, so that's how that kind of happened. Now to talk about this area, which I currently just started on in the Spanish area, um, the way that this is going to be finished most likely at this point is I'm going to have some foliage over here. It's not going to entirely be an atrium or anything like that, uh, but it is going to be a tiny bit where the buildings just kind of dip in to allow some breathing room for the foliage as well, which for me honestly just has a couple of reasons. Um, I don't want to turn this park into, into like a too expensive thing. You can't have buildings everywhere. It's still a theme park and not like a museum or anything. Um, and foliage just in general is a lot easier and quicker to place for me so that also makes my job a lot easier and foliage just looks really good um, like just having foliage I'm not a really big fan of just having foliage around areas but just having buildings around areas is also not a thing that I'm really a big fan of I like to actually kind of keep it 50 50 though probably more foliage than buildings probably 60 uh, foliage 40 buildings counting stations and things like that is how I would kind of like it to be that sort of ratio and this area over here just had so many buildings everywhere and if I didn't add some sort of gap in between the facades over here um, I would just have one really really big chain of buildings going from the start of the park like the entrance all the way through the main street to the end of the main street to that main square and then running back towards the start of the park again at the end, all the way at the back of the Spanish area, and that would be the longest string of facades ever. And I kind of wanted to break that up a tiny bit. The only problem that I feel like I might be running into over here is the fact that it's going to be really hard to cover up all that foliage. Um, I mean, it's going to be really hard to cover up all the backstage area with that foliage, but... That'll be a problem for a different time. I'll just kind of procrastinate that and um, see what I'm going to do with that. And that's probably going to be next time. And speaking of next time... Oh man, that's really bad timing. I see that I'm all out of time. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and auf Wiedersehen.